game stage and just say, okay, if you really try to hard counter my Mutas, I have this set uh, of play, whether it be Vipers or Corruptors that I can go to and just hard counter your compositions. Game three has begun. Series is tied. It's all going to come down to what those Mutas can do from Yellow. Whether he has something else up his sleeve, up in the top left-hand corner, showing the full range of potential from the Mutalists. Can he win it here on Akalon Waste? It is incredible miracles. Bio! And down in the bottom right-hand corner, a little push didn't work well in game one, but he shows his potential when it's solid play at his fingertips. It is Soul's trap! Trap has definitely shown an aggressive tone so far, but that's almost facilitated by Beal in the beginning stages. Of course, Trap showing in game number one, he can be aggressive. Game number two, it almost felt like he was just reacting to his opponent and making sure he had the right build to punish if ever Beal was complacent with his build order. It looks like Beal is just planning on doing a usual pool first build. Be surprised to see him go for a hatch first, given this probe is here. Now keep in mind, Trap is doing a regular Nexus first opening. But in game one, he did the same probe scout timing and went gateway. So Biel is going to be a little leery to just throw down a third base if he sees that pylon go down as natural, because he knows how big of a threat it can be. Forge will go down. It's kind of an interesting Forge. A lot of times you will go for the Nexus, even with this spawning pool. Uh, but I guess he's just <laughs> playing absolutely safe and now just trying to block about 235 to 240 is when normally you accrue enough minerals for the hatchery, so I'm glad Trap didn't take any extra damage against this. Oh, this is super annoying <laughs> when he double yeah. pylon blocks, but looks like BL is intending to see a cancel here. And oh, getting blocked yet again. Trap's shift button certainly working. He is queuing up, circling all around. Four lings are the next choice for BL. But Cannon's already up for Trap. I mean, Trap is still being extremely smart and not being overcommittal with this sort of, uh, you know, blockage play. It was Nexus Cannon, so you can see Trap just playing super defensive in the beginning stages. Oh, yeah, very safe. I like what we see. I mean, I think that's uh, just the, the better way to do it. Of course, against Biel, who's already shown a lot of aggression from game number two, opening up 10 pool, he's willing to do something like six circlings, eight circlings at the beginning stage, so you don't want to be caught off guard. As it stands, though, uh, just the standard forge fast expand, going to double assimilators for our Protoss over here. Spinning yeah. Chronobus. I like the double assimilator opening after all these structures have gone down. It's easy to try to slip them in before the cannon, but you really can't do that and do the pylon blocks at the same time. So Trap is doing the usual plays, but doing them very slowly. Safe Zealot, always going to be a good choice. Right now, it's just the waiting game as both these players start to prepare. On Akalon Waste, what is, what is Trap really going for, especially with his style? Is this always going to be a third base, or do you ever feel like he's going to put pressure on? Because I feel like pressure is a little bit difficult on this map. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be a weak play to do that. It really should be Stargate opening, probably into three Stargate, having seen Trap's prior games. This is a great map to do it on. You obviously have a neatly tucked away third base, and you can get a fourth base super fast after that, too. Well, it does look like it's starting like that. Stargate goes down. Pylon, excuse me, Probe goes out onto the field just to scout a little bit. I yeah. love this. Even if you're going for a macro play, you always want Probes out in the map to have your, your opponent be a little bit leery of the aggression. If they know you're just going to yeah. sit back and play macro style, well, they have no inclination to not make drones. Right? You want them to make units. And an important thing to note is that Trap scouted the third base creep. So he goes, okay, cool. You're not doing one of those two base all-ins that would cause me to have to really stop and throw down some cannons. Stargate would help thwart those by building a Void Ray. But now that Trap's seen those, he's probably going to be going into Phoenix. He's spent all that money getting the early geysers. So now he's also going to have just enough to get it up. And there it is. Boom. Probably four Phoenixes, and you normally get an eight-minute robotics facility right after this. But the real question is, when the third base comes out, there's a lot of different timings when you can put down the third. And on this map in particular, you can get it very quickly. 
Because of the rocks, you can blow them down. You have a big, big wall, 2,000 hit point wall with three armor that your opponents really cannot break. So there's a lot of options for trap if he so chooses to use them. Phoenix is popping out, picking off the Overlord. Zergling's trying to annihilate the Zealot. I don't like this play from Biel. Going to sack a lot of lings to not do too much damage. We're starting to see the Spore Crawlers go down, but this is going to be a big signal as to what Biel wants to do. If he's intending on going something a little bit more mineral-based, he's going to try to stay as low on Spore Crawlers as possible. And there it is. It looks like he's presented the Roach play. He is throwing down extra geysers. Zergling chilling at the third base. No attempt to take the third yet. The usual Robo Facility, and it is a really interesting opening. What most Protosses are trying to do is get the Colossus as fast as possible. I make you build Hydras, and then my Colossus will be the answer to that. Still, Zerg have a, a little bit of room to move around with tech. They can still go for the very fast Corruptors. We've seen that a very small amount of times, but you're punishing the fact that all your gas is invested into Phoenixes first, mm -hmm. and then Colossus, and what do you have uh -oh. on the ground? You don't have Stalkers because you need a lot of sentries. We'll find out, though. The third base still not going down normally. Protoss is kind wow. of motion to take a third base by now. Double Spore in every base and going Roach? That seems... It seems a little bit unwise. I mean, it's a little bit too overly defensive, and I'm liking this play. Four Zealot Warpin from Trap at the far outside edge, and there's really not a lot of units there to defend against it. Do they have plus one? Yes, they yes, do. They that means the Zerglings are going to be extremely weak against them. All Trap's waiting for is that next round of Lings. Excuse me, next round of Zealots. And this is so smart to think. When you see five Phoenixes, you're thinking, oh, they're playing macro. It's okay. I, I can keep droning up from here. I don't have to make too many units, but now he has a big swell of these Zealots. They're going to put pressure on the third base, and against only Zerglings, your Queens are going to be instantly denied because they can be picked up. So you're not going to have any of that long-range attack to safely kill these Zealots. Great tactical play here by Trap. He's annihilating all the drones, picking off the Spore Crawlers. Once the Spore Crawler goes down, that Queen's going to be lifted up. Oh, even the Roaches are getting lifted up. This is such an intelligent play, and now there's so many Zealots over here at the third base. He might be able to just Target the hatchery, and yes, that's what he does. Spine crawlers from BL going down, but Trap splitting up his Zealot's attack brilliantly. Look at this BL going back to mine in the midst of everything. The instant BL begins to target fire down the hatch, oh. that's when the drones engage, but it's not enough. The hatch goes down. Nice opening out from Trap, made a lot of sense. Great pressure. Now he's motioning to take his third base. Down goes the Nexus. And now, it just looked like Bjol is so far behind. Yes, he has a lot of roaches, but what can he do against this narrow little choke at the natural, against the narrow choke at the third base? This is working out perfectly. And with Phoenix is on the map, he's going to be able to see any motion to attack. And nice then, play gooping that up. It will delay the range. It makes it slightly more difficult to protect the second and third base. But much to no one's surprise, Aspire is done for Bjol. I get the sense that he wants to go Mutas, but I really think that Trap is far and away ahead. This is a defensive play from Trap. He already is getting Twilight Council for Blink. He's continuing to scout and pick off drones with his Phoenixes. This is why Roaches are so hard this day and age. I mean, Protoss have gotten so good. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. A big misstep by Trap, losing his sentry in the front. Now Roach is getting into the main base, getting into the natural. We'll be able to pick off some probes here, but a good response so far by our Protoss player. And the Colossus there will shut things down. A second Colossus is going to uh -oh. pop out right on top of the Roaches. He will not be able to gun that down fast enough. A good force field will stop the Roaches from moving any further. And a great defense so far from Trap. Biel not getting in significant gains there. 93 to 109, we're seeing Corruptors arriving, a lot of macro hatches going down, so it looks like Trap ain't going to be going mute as this game. He's going to be flooding a bunch of Corruptors and likely pulling back into something like a Roach Hydra Corruptor Force, trying to be extremely aggressive against, uh, against Trap. Couple lifts, fairly successful, and man, Trap is just good. He knows exactly where these Corruptors are going to be how to time and place those Phoenixes. You know, I'm a little bit worried about this Corruptor timing. I mean, yes, they're good against the current composition, but once you show them, and also once Blink is out, Corruptors become a lot less viable. Blink Starkers will just blink directly underneath the Corruptors. Corruptors don't really damage wow. the Colossus fast enough. And I feel like Trap just has every advantage in this game. It's very difficult. Wait, Muta transitions. Now Whoa. this is... 
This is actually very, very, very risky. This is an extreme risk. I mean, this force can easily kill the 11 mutas, and it must be taken head on. I mean, it's going to have to be a big flood of Zerglings after this to just be able to keep it alive, but Trap, Trap's playing solid and stable. He's it's looking like, so good. It's like Trap has a production tab in his head, man. Like, how does he know these mutas are popping out? Again, attacking at the perfect time when Buell wants to transition over and take momentum in the game. If this um, is a minute later, this attack does not work. But now, Buell is against the ropes once again, just like game number two. Phoenix is trying to chase down these Mutalists. Oh, wow, Buell. So many units are inside of Buell's natural. He's already evacuated. I mean, Buell is just getting eviscerated. Trap knows these timings so perfectly. Biel does force a retreat from some of the units, but the majority of them are still ripping down expansions. Look at the split by Trap, knowing exactly how to utilize that Mothership core for maximum potential. Everything is perfect, and Biel trying to spring for some sort of response, but he has none. Now he's stabilized, killing oh, the Oh no, the Spire falls down. Biel's hopes to transition out are gone. The rest of the force falls, but is there even the Roach Warren on the field? That's oh. the only unit producing structure that we're going to be seeing Biel use. He's lost two bases. He does have one up in this top side still operational and his main, but he is going to be running low on Larva. His drone count is at 5961. Still doing pretty good in the drone count, but it's such an easy game for yeah. Trap at this point. I mean, how many Corruptors do we have out in the field? Six against three current Colossus. And of course, we're expecting more a little bit later. I think Trap feels so comfortable. Look at him. He's going up into a fleet beacon just to defend against those mutas a little bit better. He yeah. knows all he has to do is macro, max the 200-200, and win the game. There is 100% a composition advantage once he does that. So it looks like there is the attempt for Zerg to move in, and of course, the answer of the Photon Overcharge. This is an extremely tough position for Biel, who looks like he's just going to bank on the pure brunt power of Corruptor Muta. Anion Pulse Crystals, that's the range upgrade for Phoenixes going down. Trap will be able to kite the Corruptors, but only barely. So that is where Biel is trying to hope that his edge lies. Oh, Colossus out of position. One of them gets taken out at the trade of a couple of Mutas there. But a good trade overall for Buell empowering the ground army. That's stuff that you need to do if you have the ability to incorporate roaches or hydras. But at this point, he's so barren in terms of his, his just bank. He doesn't have good economy. It's hard for him to actually get a ground army. There it is. Pathogen glands. Biel is going to continue to commit to this air play. He wants to try to get a fungal growth on the air units, continue to build corruptors. Lings are going to be used largely for counterattack. But as you say, Trap just needs to wait until he has a big enough army, and then it's time to move out. But man, most players wait till they're maxed. Trap ain't going to give Biel that luxury. He's yeah. going to immediately drill in cannons everywhere. What's the vulnerability for Trap? I can't even see one in this phase. Oh, and, oh eight. Range Phoenix is there to greet the Air Force. No way that he can contest that. It takes way too long. Now the Stalkers, Sentries, and Colossus yet again going into the natural base. An undefended Zerg expansion will go down. Muta sprinting over to try to deal with this. Phoenix is directly engaging against these Corruptors. That's not the trade you want, but it really shows how big of an advantage Trap has. I mean, this is looking very grim for Biel. The supply counts betray how terrible a situation it truly is for him. More roaches being produced, but this force is unbelievable. Ripping the mule <laughs> force to shreds. The Corruptors are going to fall. Biel gets shut down. The dance of the Phoenix. 26 roaches in production right now, but it's a little bit too little, too late. Maybe, maybe if Trap segments all of his units, but of course he's a world-class player. I don't think he's gonna do that. All the roaches get lifted. Drones being pulled off the line. Roaches from the right-hand side, a good surround, but there's just way too much here for Trap. With the Colossus, he's able to do magnificent damage. Now the drone's gonna be incinerated. A superior compositional build by Trap. Pick BL down one at a time. GG. GG. He may have lost the first game to Mutas, but games two and three delightfully swept them up.
just a great series, a great combination of uh, how he's able to maintain the momentum. A lot of Protosses aren't able to see through that, but Trap sees where the weaknesses are, gets the quick third base, then realizes he does have the advantage to take the initiative.